You, you, you know this uh, story about one of these Eurosceptic MPs who was doing an interview uh, in, a, in a radio uh, station about his Euroscepticism, and who's been asked, uh, uh, wh wh why, is, why, why are you so anti? Why are you so anti-European? You know, wh why do you hate Europe so much? And he said, is it, the interviewer said, is it ignorance or apathy? And the guy replied, I don't know, and I don't care. <laughs> I thought there was, a, there was a very interesting thing from a, uh, there was a guy from UKIP, uh, I think it was a UKIP uh, conference, and they had it here, and they had some people from French who were anti-European came over, and there's a, an English guy who refused to listen to the French guy who was anti-European. He was anti-European. He didn't want to listen because he hated the French. And, and he was annoyed that he was talking at the thing. And it, 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 I just think, this, with the United Kingdom, I happened to run around the United Kingdom recently, and... <laughs> England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland, and we used to kill each other, and now we don't. It's what humans do. We, we do this coming together thing. Is it easy? It isn't easy. If you look at how the United Kingdom came together, it was quite difficult. It was difficult to make it happen. I mean, Wales was actually uh, invaded by Edward I, and there was all these castles, and they've just sort of, their, their law is linked with ours, and it's not, it wasn't kind of a voting thing, but now it's better, because we, well, it wasn't, because, but it's now, the United Kingdom, I think you'd all agree, it's better than the, the old murder thing we used to do. <laughs> so, in the United Kingdom, we've already proved this, and the idea of European Union, if you want a fair 6.5 billion people in the world, I think everyone in this room, everyone in the world would like everyone to have a fair chance, and if you don't, you're a Nazi. Um, <laughs> and if you want that. Well, you know, who would, who would not want everyone to have a fair chance? It's got to be the Nazis and the right-wingers. So, if you want that, we've got to learn to work together in Europe in some shape or form. That's what we're doing. Alexander the Great to World War II, we did murder for uh, two and a half thousand years, and now we're doing the talking thing. Incredibly boring, but it's better than the murder thing. And if we're doing that, then we should be at the heart of it, and Britain should be at the heart of it, because we've got all this talent. We shouldn't shy away and hide away and be little Englanders. We should be big Englanders, big United Kingdomers, and be out there. So no, I totally believe Without that. agreeing with everything you've said. <laughs> this, is my, this is just my point of view. <laughs> I think it makes a very important point about us being part of a, of a bigger union, and the cooperation that can exist between us and other countries, and the exchanges that can happen. I, I was at Siemens, a company yesterday, which is a German company, which is based in, in Britain. It's got 17,000 employees in Britain. It's now leading in low carbon technology in this uh, country, but it's very much part of Britain as well as part of the European Union. And we need more companies that are working in all the different countries of the European Union because that will lead to more jobs in the future. I'd like to see a digital infrastructure right across the whole of Europe. So everybody's linked up by super fast broadband in every part of Europe and that would make for far better communications, more businesses, more jobs as a result of that. And we need some of these European projects that will actually give us the chance to get more jobs in the future. So let's be part of uh, Europe and let's make it work and let's make sure that Europe can work for us as well as us being part of Europe. Yeah. Now one last question, the, the guy there. I'd add to that with um, saying that immigrants from Eastern Europe are doing the jobs that British people don't want to do um, because it's far too easy to scrounge off the state in this country. What would you say about that view? Well in our, in our manifesto we're making it clear there is no lifetime on the door. You know when we made this offer to, to young people about you'll get a job or training after six months. We're very clear, if we're making this offer, you've got to accept it, because otherwise uh, we're wasting public money uh, and uh, we're losing in, in benefits money. So if you don't accept it, you will lose some of your benefits. We're now saying to people who are long-term unemployed, if you uh, uh, don't accept an offer that we make to you for a, for a job or for training for a job, uh, then you will also lose some of your benefits. So the thing that you're worried about, not being tough enough on people who are uh, scrounging on the welfare system, we are being tough and we are trying to make sure that people who can work actually do work and we want to make it a right to work to get the opportunity to work if you're long-term unemployed, but it's also a responsibility to take, up, to take up the job and offer. You see, we're in a Britain where there, there are going to be huge opportunities for jobs in the next few years. Don't be pessimistic about the future of Britain because we're leading the world in a whole range of different industries and services. You know, we're not just leading in low carbon and in digital, we're leading in a whole range of advanced manufacturing areas. Someone, someone was just telling me the other day and showing me the information in space satellites. You'd think it was America that was leading. Britain is doing amazing work in space satellites. Stem cells research that are going to cure lots of the, the diseases that are too common uh, now. 
We're leading the world in, in, in the curing of strokes as a result of tests and trials that are now being done in Britain at the moment because of huge advances in stem cell research, nanotechnology, plastics, electronics, all these different things. Britain has got a huge innovative and creative genius. Uh, and as you know, Jonathan Ive, a British citizen, uh, the person who's developed uh, the iPod, Tim Berners-Lee, a British citizen who uh, uh, then went on to develop uh, the, the internet. We're leading the second wave of the second generation of the internet called the Semantic uh, Web. We've just set up a project with Mr. Berners-Lee and his other uh, staff so that Britain leads. In, if you understand the internet as moving from managing files, if you go onto the internet, you get onto a whole series of files under Google or anybody else but you don't get straight through to the data you want. Under the semantic web, you'd get straight through to the data that you want to do, so it's managing data, not managing files. And that's what the semantic web is about. It's the web of linked data. Britain is leading the way in this, and I believe that can make a huge difference to our ability to lead in all these new knowledge-based industries for the future. So great opportunities for jobs in the future if we back our scientific and creative genius, and that will mean jobs for people here as well as jobs for people in other parts of the country. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much, Gordon Brown. Thank you, dear. Hello and welcome to BBC Parliament's coverage of election 2010. On Tuesday the 13th of April, Plaid Cymru leader Ewan Wynne-Jones launched the party's manifesto for the general election, promising to protect the vulnerable and frontline services as well as a phased withdrawal of troops from Afghanistan. What a that? A very good morning to you all. My name is Dorian Rees. I'm an ex-miner. I come from the town of Herbert in the Rhondda Valley. I'm 77 year old. I'm here this morning to introduce the main...